finally have an excuse to actually bring this into the thing. Hey, what's going on guys? Guess what I saw this week? I saw the amazing movie Wonder Woman. This is my review on the amazing movie Wonder Woman. Some of you are wondering how really great Wonder Woman was and so I tell you it's an amazing movie. You should really go and see it. Since this is a movie review we're gonna go over the two basic things. This is the real rating of the movie and then also a personal rating system of mine. Along the way I'll kind of explain why they rated it the way that they did. At the very end there's gonna be a spoiler rant where you know I rant about spoilers. Wonder Woman is basically the origin story of Wonder Woman. Basically what she did to become Wonder Woman, how she left the mascara. She also finds a guy named Steve. It's a very, very intense origin story. I mean, it was 141 minutes of amazingness. I had really high expectations. I know this is a DC movie and DC hasn't been doing a lot of great stuff lately, but that's okay, this was wonderful. It's DC's way of kind of redeeming themselves a little bit at a time from all those Rotten Tomato reviews on Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad and all that kind of stuff. So the Motion Picture Association of America has this rating system. They follow it pretty well, I say, most of the time. I think they do a very good job of rating these movies, but sometimes it's not the best rating. So they rated this movie PG-13, which means if you're over 13 you're okay and like parents just for their kids to know that there are some stuff that are very adults or are going to be adults and so it's kind of that warning sign you see the 13 and you're thinking oh, okay maybe I shouldn't take my seven-year-old kid so they rated this movie PG-13 for sequences of violence and action and some suggestive content and I think it's okay it's actually a little bit more vague than I think they meant it to be but you know it's movie without giving away spoilers. What happens through the movie, the sequences of action and violence, this is a superhero movie so there's going to be a lot of fighting. It's also set in the World War One, so you can imagine how gory that's going to be. There are some scenes where, you know, there are troops coming home from the war who are very wounded. There's a bunch of battle scenes. I think there were like maybe three main battle scenes with more than two characters. There's like scenes with the guy with his leg gone, his arm gone. There's also scenes where there's very bloody makeup design. Really, really accurate. I was very appreciative of that, but it's also really um, scary for younger kids, I know. But if your kid can handle it, I think you guys are gonna be okay. The violence and action part isn't really that gross and it's not like D-Day. I don't think there's a lot in there that is too violent. The second reason why they rated this movie PG-13 was for some suggestive content. Again, they're being kind of vague with that. I'm just gonna explain a couple of the scenes to you guys so that you know what you're getting into when you're seeing the movie. For the romance part, there is a total of one kissing scene and it's not even that long. Wonderful that they did that. The male lead is Chris Pine, who plays Steve Trevors. He and Wonder Woman are in a relationship together during her Wonder Woman comic days, also in the Linda Carter version. And so the romance is kind of expected. There's one other scene that I kind of was cringing at and it was like a very long scene. For those of you who have read the comics, you know that Diana is made out of clay. She was brought to life by Zeus. Steve Trevors has this conversation with Wonder Woman about, you know, how babies are made, why she existed, because who's her father? Have you never met a man before? I mean, what about your father? I had no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. The last scene that was really, really, really like, yeah, we're gonna cover your eyes for this. This scene where Steve Trevor's, he's injured, he's taking a bath, and then there's this scene where, you know, I don't know why, but I guess it's a requirement for all men to take a shower or something. Those are the scenes that were like the most like, you know, let's cover your eyes for this part. So if I were gonna rate it for what it was, I would say it's the PG plus that I talked about in the Lego Batman review. The PG plus is like, you know, the thing where you're like, okay, maybe you can definitely come, but there are gonna be some parts where we're gonna fast forward, but it's not so bad that you don't need to fast forward them. 10 year olds can definitely watch it. I can understand that. But anything lower than that, I'd probably suggest that you don't bring your seven-year-old. So on the frequency chart for the sequences of action and violence and the suggested content, I'm going to give it a 3.5 to 4. Just because it wasn't so bad that it was taking over the entire movie, but it was also like there enough that you 
could say, hey, we're not gonna watch this. On my magical scale of movies, I have the scale of Steamboat Willie to Deadpool, Steamboat Willie being one, Deadpool being a 10. And so Wonder Woman is going to be on the wonderful position of four, which is El Dorado. I rated this movie on El Dorado because it's really, it's really a good movie. I don't wanna stop you guys from watching it, so that's why I'm landing on four. That was the non-spoiler review, so thank you guys so much for watching and watching me uh, wield this ax around in my room alone, and I just flinched, wow. But otherwise, thank you for watching the Wonder Woman review that I have, and I will see you guys next time. If you would leave down in the comments below which superhero movie DC should do next, I would love to hear that, and thank you so much for watching. Welcome to the spoiler rant. So I watched this movie twice and there are so many things that I really really enjoyed. Also some things that I really did not enjoy. But anyways, we're gonna go over those things and it's gonna be great. I really really enjoyed this movie and so did most of my family. Uh, my aunt had watched the Linda Carter Wonder Woman TV series since she was a kid and she felt like a kid again. My mom also enjoyed it for the same reason, but my brother actually enjoyed it too. First of all, I really liked how they made the origin story very simple. They didn't complicate it a lot. They stuck true to most of the comics. One of the things I really appreciated about Diana was that she was really innocent because, you know, she's on an island full of women who are separated from the entire world. She's the only kid there, so she's gonna stay with her innocence. I really liked all of the Amazonian women. I mean, their acting wasn't the best thing ever, but it was still really nice to see all of these very strong and tall women. I don't know if they're all supermodels or volleyball players or just really, really tall, muscular women, but it was really nice to see all of those women being able to be represented in this, like, island. Another thing that I appreciated about Diana was that she, her fighting face was totally relatable. She basically looked like Bucky fighting T'Challa in his scared face. Basically, that's what she looked like. Pretty sure her full name is Diana Challenge Accepted Prince. Literally the whole time, everybody was like, no, Diana, don't do that. And then Diana says, no, I'm going. One other thing that I appreciated about Diana was her eyeliner. Oh my goodness, her makeup was on fleek. Apparently being formed out of clay gives you perfect makeup at puberty. Last thing that I liked about Diana was her name explanation. Diana, Princess of Themis. Prince, Diana Prince. I haven't looked too deep into Wonder Woman's character, but I do actually like the fact that they explained why her name is Diana Prince. Because why would your secret identity have your actual name in your secret identity? I really liked Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She was really wonderful. I enjoyed her. She's very, 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 very good at playing her role. It was a good choice for DC to choose her as Wonder Woman. I also like that she kept her Israeli accent and stayed true to herself through the entire movie. It gave the Amazonian woman a very exotic and very, very special feel to them. There are some small things that I kind of enjoyed. When Diana was in London and everybody was like color coordinated the blues and grays and everything, and it was very, very, very satisfying from an OCD person's perspective. I love Chief, Sammy, and Charlie, and then also Steve and Diana. The five of them were just really great. The last little thing that I really, really liked about the movie, it's a really small scene. It's when they're in the trenches in No Man's Land and Chief, he sees a soldier and the soldier says, oh my goodness, there's my friend, and they hug it out. It's really short, probably about five to 10 seconds long. But I really appreciated that because it gave me that feeling of like what it was like to be in a war. Basically, they're seeing each other when they didn't think that they would see each other at all. Now we're on to the dislikes, the cons, the whatever you want to call them, the non-perks, the I want to hit your face with an X sort of feelings. After I watched the movie twice, I noticed that all of the Amazonian women had gauntlets on. If you guys know anything about Wonder Woman, those gauntlets are there to dampen her power. They're there to restrain her from actually killing someone in a hug. And all of the Amazonian women had that. I don't know if it was maybe just an explanation thing, but those gauntlets were specifically for Wonder Woman to have. It's just I didn't like that they didn't explain the gauntlets other than, hey look, I can, I can dodge a bullet with these things. Some other things that I noticed throughout the movie that I didn't like that weren't that original was some of the scenes where basically they're mimicking Disney. First there was that Ariel scene where she's like, you know, seeing a man for the first time and it's basically a recreation of Ariel. And also there is the Beauty and the Beast scene, the recent movie where she's throwing her dress off in horseback and she's changed. It's not that I hated them, I just was kind of like, you could have done something else. But I get it, it was artsy. And Disney's done it and they've succeeded, so why not wait? 
some other little things like how did the notebook survive underwater? Why didn't they keep the glasses on for longer? Why did you leave your sword stuck in the man? How did you discover you're gonna fly in the middle of a battle? Monologuing? And what did you mean about Ares finding Diana if she knew more? Those little things are just small tiny things I put on a list. Last thing that I didn't enjoy were the villains. I didn't think they were true 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 villains because of just how one dimensional they were. What I think they should have done was more of Ares kind of manipulating things from the distance and them showing that instead of showing it at the very end explaining everything just kind of showing things being manipulated over time throughout the movie as the events came along instead of just showing everything and explaining everything in one fell swoop i don't know what the director had in mind originally but that's the way i would do it I'm gonna end with just naming one of my favorite scenes. My favorite scene out of all of them was when Diana got out of the trenches and walked up to No Man's Land and basically just demolished the Nazis. I think that was really, really important. And also I like that she had to rely on Steve and Sammy and everybody else to also pull her through it as well. It was a really good teamwork effort, but even though she was running point. So my one question for you all is, what is one thing from Diana's armor that you would want to wear? Is it her circlet? Is it the armor that she wore? Or anything else that you guys can tell me about that, even the lasso of truth. Thank you guys so much for watching this totally wonderful review of Wonder Woman. I really, really hope that you guys stick around for more because there are more movies coming out. The summer has started for me. I'm going to be seeing much more movies more frequently than usual. I will see you later.